Of course, this is uh, Joe Law Factor Live on DBS, and I said that I was going to give you the name of the winner of, for the $100 tonight, and it's going to Julia Griffith. We did ask you to call in and say, why do you think we're going to give away $100 to many of our viewers next week? And uh, she got the answer right, so she gets $100 tonight, and maybe she may get another $100 next week. Now, if you've just tuned in and you're thinking, what's this all about? What we've said is next week, many of our viewers are going to receive a hundred dollars but in order to uh, be able to receive it you have to be a Delore fan factor now if you are not one of those then you can't win and we do know all our fan factors so if you want to be one go on to the website delorefactorlife.com or you can call the office so you can email us you have all the details I'm sure you you do know them uh, and we'll put you through the registration which takes literally a minute all right, and only those people will be able to participate next week, and you have the possibility to win $100 cash, not vouchers, cash. Okay, now, um, also, uh, we've been talking about the giveaway tonight on set. Um, my, uh, my guests have given me some answers, and I haven't said to them whether they're right or wrong, <laughs> but there is one, uh, an, a, one decade here that is running away. Uh, people think it's that one. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> and if you haven't, uh, if you don't know what the question is, we asked you, we told you about Ladera, of course, Ladera Resort in Sufra. Uh, we've told you uh, that it was the first resort with the um, open wall concept. And we asked you what decades did that happen? Was it the 70s, 80s, or 90s? All right, 70s, 80s, or 90s. That's all you need to tell us. And if you get it right, you and three other persons can have brunch uh, in October, uh, any Sunday in October, at the, the Zashin uh, restaurant in Ladera. So keep on going. We're going to choose the winner tonight. Now, of course, uh, I, I have here two of my guests. I have um, Dr. Walcott from the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, and I also have Lucia Zephyrin um, of the Cool Water Spa, Day Spa. So, Lucia, tell us about you know yourself in terms of what you do at the spa and why standards are so important there. Um. Do you want to start with the spa itself? Where is it located? I'm in Red Riotta, Rodney Bay. Okay. Yeah, and. Um, and what kind of services do you provide there? Well, I know you. I we, know you, you've done some stuff for we, me in the past. We, we um, offer a wide range of services, mm -hmm. um, from massages, facials, manicures, pedicures. I do um, permanent makeup, and now I do novel lashes as well. And so I think um, I've been in the hotel industry for the last. 20, I've been in this service for the last 24 years. Wow, and, um, <laughs> that's amazing. I have done some training in Europe and America. And every year I try to keep up. I travel to the States to spa conferences just to make sure that I'm on top of everything. Um, we decided to go into um, to form an association because um, a lot of people have been opening up little salons around the place and people are coming in and saying there's so many of them coming up and nothing not happening so we need to work with standards to ensure that these people not to close them down but to ensure that they they would adhere to what was happening in terms of disinfecting and sanitize sanitizing the, the stuff and um, um, we Yvonne from San Lucia College of Services called and said, well, we need to form something. And so we got a few of us together. For the last three years, we have been working on it. And we decided we need to work together to get everybody on board. And um, we also got Bureau Standards involved. So that way we can come up with um, best practices for everybody. OK. Yeah. Now, you obviously, there was a need. That's why you formed yeah. but what was that need why was it important to actually get everyone together at that time was it because there were discrepancies was it because you perhaps saw certain people operating and the standards were just not well right? that's one of the that's one of the that's one of them yes mm -hmm. um, there were so many um, as I said a lot of stuff was happening um, that was just not 
I know you have, you have to be careful <laughs> because you have to choose your words yes, so you don't offend to, people. So, so right, let, me put, let me put yes. some of the words into your mouth yeah. then. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I know that a lot of people, they have a passion in mm. certain things, yes. especially if you don't have a qualification. And if yeah. you don't have a qualification, sometimes you're very good at you know, doing, doing things with your hands, things, yes. you know, with your hairdresser or mm -hmm. your salon, whatever. And yeah. so you just set up a business. A business, that's okay. what it is. And you don't have the, the, you may have the knowledge, you may even have some of the well, experience as well, mm -hmm. but you don't know the standards. The, the standards. Mm -hmm. And that's, what, that's where the problem is. A lot of people don't know the standards. Right. They just set up shop and they just work. And um, some people go to them and then they come back and say, well, I went there and I got an infection. And um, sometimes they, they may get it from somebody else as well, mm -hmm. but they, they would see. And if you don't tell them what it is, when you start working with them, they think maybe they get it from you as well. Mm -hmm. So you need to be careful. That's why it's important that um, when you go to a salon, you have to ensure that everything is sterilized in front of your face and where they're taking the the equipment from or the implement to ensure that it's sterilized properly. And what about yeah. having certain certificates or things on the wall? Do, is that necessary? Um, well, now that the standards are in place, mm -hmm. um, we would be working on that mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. then if you go somewhere and you're not happy about something, you would call in and um, the Bureau would come in to investigate to ensure that um, everybody meet the, the requirements. Okay, so yes. um, Dr. Walcott, what happens in a situation where you've just seen a, a new, I say you, I mean generally speaking the Bureau, mm -hmm. they see a new business, whether it is you know, in the beauty industry or not, you see something new. Whose responsibility is it to ensure they are following proper well, standards? Um, Delia, it's an interesting question. It's something that we have to always grapple with on a day-to-day -day basis because there are a number of agencies that are responsible for different sectors. So for example, um, the food and beverage sector, um, when you're looking at salons, barbershops, um, spas, these um, businesses are actually regulated by the Ministry of Health under the Public Health Act. And there are a number of requirements that these um, businesses would have to meet as well. Okay, but in terms of... Um now you know this, mm -hmm. and let's just say it is a, a beauty salon. Because of the association, could you go to them, Lucia, and say, we have an association, uh, you know, we, we are away, we're not part of it, blah, blah, blah? Well, it's not mandatory, but we're just asking people to join, and so that way we can, as they said, um, with more people on board, we can make things happen. Mm -hmm. So if there's a problem, they can come to us, and we can work with them as mm -hmm. well to ensure that they... Um, work with the standards. Mm. Well, I'm um, asking you that yes. question because they could say they didn't even know that you existed. Yes, but you I'm know they here. could. So well, how are they supposed to know? Well, that now you that exist? I'm here, it's, <laughs> a, <laughs> it's an avenue for them to know now that we do have an association that they can come to us and we can work with them. Yes. And, and would you say, um, Dr. Walker, that for every type of business, whether it's a product or a service, that there is a standard that they all have to to follow? Yes, there actually is a standard. Um, there are different names that we can call it. We can call it a standard. We can call it a code of practice, um, best practice guidelines. Mm -hmm. But for most established um, services and products, there are standards which people abide to, to ensure mm -hmm. um, product safety or sa safety in the service, mm -hmm. um, all in an effort to protect the consumer. Okay, now if I, bi if I visit a business mm -hmm. or I have a, a product and it's faulty or I'm not happy, do I come to you to complain? Yes, you can. <laughs> um, the way we sort of regulate the um, various products and services is dependent on whether or not if we have what we call compulsory standards. When a standard is adopted in St. Lucia as a compulsory standard, it's actually a piece of legislation that has to be implemented. And we monitor and police all compulsory standards. Which are? For example, a very common one um, right here on the table, we have oh. bottled water, packaged mm -hmm. water. Mm -hmm. It's a compulsory standard. We monitor the importation of all packaged water into St. Lucia and all packaged water produced in St. Lucia. Um, we do that through inspection and testing of the product at the level of the manufacturing plant. We go, we take samples of the shelves. 
um, all imported water. Do you tell people we you're test. coming or you just turn up? No, we just turn up. Um, oh. But in an effort, we also work with our local manufacturers. They are aware of what the requirements are. Um, we provide technical assistance. If they're having difficulty with a particular parameter, a particular requirement, we can give them advice on how they can solve the solution mm -hmm. um, to ensure that they um, meet the requirements of the standard. What else is compulsory? The tires, we spoke about the tire inspection program. So tires, we have compulsory standards for those. We have compulsory standards in relation to labeling. Most of our, well, all of our labeling standards for prepackaged goods are compulsory standards. So we have a market surveillance program. We go out into the supermarket. Don't tell me you read all those labels. <laughs> Don't tell me that. Yes, we do actually. Oh gosh. Um, and one of the requirements of our labeling standard is that the, sta the label should be in English or it can have other languages, but it must have English. Oh boy, some people so are one of the complaints, <laughs> no, it, it is true. <laughs> one of the complaints that we actually fall on a day-to-day -day basis is mm -hmm. when persons come across um, products labeled in foreign language and there isn't mm -hmm. the, the English, um, right. English version to the information. Um, and we do follow up on a number of these complaints. On um, The level of complaints have reduced. I'm sure most persons would see that at least maybe 75% to 80%, if not more, mm -hmm. of products are now properly labeled And, and do you English. also look at what the speculators bring in on their stores? Because a lot of people just assume they're big, you know, large organizations that you kind of uh, oversee. But what about smaller um, businesses? Smaller businesses, mm -hmm. if we're talking about the community shop mm -hmm. that sells prepackaged food, yes, we do that. We actually do island-wide surveillance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, well I know I'm certainly <laughs> learning a lot uh, mm -hmm. about standards. Well, a lot have of things. a standard now for um, health and wellness. Yes. And um, mm -hmm. now that will be law and mm -hmm. that they have to mm -hmm. okay. adhere to. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, I'm learning so a lot now, tonight and I hope yes. that you are uh, mm -hmm. too. Uh, let's give you a quick reminder of tonight's giveaway. Ladera was the first resort in the Caribbean to introduce the open air three wall concept. What decade did this happen? Was it the 70s, 80s or 90s? And when we return, Leonis Francois will tell us about another measure of standards, education for your youth, our youth, and we'll take your calls. This is Delore Factor Live. See you soon. <laughs>